Take one ambitious Norman knight who wants to impress his boss. And another accomplished Norman knight who wants to marry the boss's sister. Put them in the cauldron. That was Ireland in the 1170s and let them simmer. And what you have is a recipe for disaster for the Normans. And this is the story of the Battle of Thurles. But first some housekeeping. In all my playlists so far I've referred to the term Norman, when technically it was the Anglo-Normans that invaded Ireland. But there is a narrative that describes these men as being English, and we all seem to think that they spoke with an accent something like this. Look, my dear old fruit, it may be a tragedy to you, but it certainly isn't to me. But the England as we know today was only beginning to form. The Anglo-Norman King Henry II held lands in France, England and Ireland. These men probably spoke a prototype English or indeed French. And in fact, when I went to visit France and the grave of Richard the Lionheart, the French guide gleefully told us, thinking that we were English people, that in all reality, Richard probably spoke French. But the annals of the Four Masters don't mince their words. They refer to these men as the English. The Anglo-Normans arrived in 1169 after being offered lands for their assistance by the Irish King Dermot MacMurrah in order to restore him to his kingdom. They were ultimately led by the Norman knight Richard de Clare, otherwise known as Strongbow. So far in this playlist, we have discussed the Normans with their superior military equipment and tactics, their use of cavalry and the shock charge, their lack of fear against superior numbers, their building of fortifications to hold their ground in the east of Ireland. All this made them seem unstoppable. But they were about to make a mistake by invading into the south of the country and into the province of Munster. And here is the background to some of the players at this time. On the Norman side were our two knights from earlier, competing for the attention of their boss, Strongbow. Raymond Le Gros was an accomplished knight and was sent by Strongbow to Ireland in 1170 and landed at Baggenbun Head, County Wexford, where he was immediately besieged in his entrenchments by the combined local forces of Irish and Viking. Although vastly outnumbered in this battle, Gerald of Wales gives the numbers at 3,000 Irish against Le Gros's force of about 100, including 10 knights. The result was that about a thousand of the combined Irish and Viking force were either killed or captured. He was Strongbow's second in command and had chief share both in the capture of Waterford and in the successful assault on Dublin in July 1171 when he led one of the sallies from the town and was said to have impaled two Irish warriors on his lance. He was popular with his soldiers, for example often walking amongst them during guard duty. Strongbow later offended him when he refused to allow him marry his sister Basilia. After that, Raymond returned to Wales in disgust, and Hervé became constable of Ireland. According to one historian, Hervé was, quote, he was anxious to distinguish himself by some successes as a commander, recommended to the Earl the invasion of Munster, in anticipation, as he said, of an intended revolt in that quarter of a threatening aspect. Strongbow approved of his counsel, and they marched together with a powerful army to Cashel, where they encamped. Hervé and Strongbow, having ascertained the formidable numbers of the enemy, agreed to send to Dublin for reinforcement from the garrison there, which consisted chiefly of Ostmen who had entered the English pay. On the Irish side was Rory O'Connor. In 1166 Rory was inaugurated as High King of Ireland in Dublin, arguably the first without opposition. One of Rory's first acts as king was to invade Leinster and expel its king, Dermot MacMurrah. Rory's position in Ireland remained strong until the Anglo-Normans invaded. Rory experienced mixed successes fighting the Normans and their rebellious Irish allies. But losing much of Leinster, along with the Norse Gael cities of Waterford, Wexford and Dublin, he was, however, able to unite much of the fractious Irish military forces, something not seen since the days of Brian Boru. Donald Moore O'Brien was descended from the great Brian Boru and was King of Thomond. In 1171 he submitted to King Henry II of England at Cashel. 
Despite fighting with most of his Irish neighbours, he also continued to fight successfully against a Norman incursion into the southwest of Ireland for many years. It was Donald who ultimately led the Irish forces at Thurlis. Having camped in the area of Log Nafula, Strongbow and his forces were surprised early in the morning by Donald, as an anonymous poet put it, quote, that iron tide on Jula's side was stopped by King Donald Moore. The battle took place in October 1174 in the town of Thurlis, County Tipperary. It was a major engagement during the Norman invasions and saw an alliance of the Irish under Rory O'Connor defeat the Normans under Strongbow and Hervé. It was a great chance for the Irish to finally drive the invaders back into the sea. There were revolts in the areas controlled by the Normans. But I'm going to leave this telling of this story to the annals of the Four Masters, accompanied by the beautiful voice of Anya O'Flynn. And I leave a link in the comments below to the full version of Anya's song. For those who died that Easter tide in the springing of the while the world gaze with deep amaze at those fearless men but few. shine through the foggy dew. I'm back through the glen I rode again, and my heart with grief was sore. For I parted then with valiant men, whom I never shall see more. But to and fro in my dreams I go, and I kneel and pray for you, for slain. 